Hello everybody, welcome to The Wonky Angle, where I talk about electronic music, both new and old. And today I'm talking about the new album from John Tejada, Sleepwalker. Okay, so uh, John Tejada is a fairly prolific electronic artist, born in Vienna but based in Los Angeles. Uh, guy's been at it since 1994 and has been regularly putting out albums under his own name since 98. This will mark his 14th studio album to date. I'd heard about this guy in passing a number of times. He's released five albums on the Compact label. I think I saw him remix one of the tracks on that last Platt album. And I saw a little bit of buzz for his side project with Reggie Watts uh, called Wahata. <laughs> and of course I've seen a number of comparisons fans have made with Orbital, which I gotta at least try this guy out on that promise, even if it turns out he's not actually that similar. In any case, the more I looked into him after seeing this album show up in the new electronic music section of iTunes, uh, the more I felt like he was the kind of artist that I should be getting into. Artists like him are the bread and butter of this channel. Who else is gonna cover him? <laughs> I rarely see anyone talking about him. I don't think I've even seen any requests to cover him in my comments, but he sounded like he'd be right up my alley, the perfect candidate for me to cover more in depth. So I, of course, made sure to marathon all his studio albums, and here's my thoughts on his discography so far. So I started here. Technically, he released an album before this under the name Lucid Dream, but this was his first under his own name. Stylistically, it's nothing game-changing. It's a pretty standard collection of well-polished techno and tech house, but it's all really solid and well-made for what it is. Nice, mildly disorienting melodies and propulsive techno grooves. It's kind of like if uh, Dead Mouse's Vexillology had effort put into it and it was actually good. It's a promising start for sure. Meanwhile, this one focuses way more on this bouncy, shuffling, down-tempo mix that occasionally leans towards what I suppose we would now call lo-fi hip-hop. It's made out of all the same kinds of synth tones and textures as his last album, just flipped into a different context. Pretty neat. Similar mix to the previous album, mostly minimal down-tempo leaning, but a bit more variety and energy this time around. Got a few tracks that have a bit more of a hard-hitting electro flavor, getting some slight, like, tipper or rumpistol vibes. Some of it ended up falling into the background, admittedly, but it's still pretty solid for what it is. Going back to the more straightforward Tech House style of his debut, still as consistently danceable as you'd want, plenty of bangers like Thoughts in Chains, uh, solid melodic moments like A Fading Memory, and the track Mating Rhythm gives me strong Kenny G vibes in the best way, although much of the rest didn't really stick with me as anything memorable. This one went in a pretty interesting direction though, there's a lot more incorporation of vocals here. While the instrumentals feel a lot glitchier and more well detailed, although the overall vibe of everything still sticks to the same minimal micro house sound as before. Pretty nice! Doesn't sound like any other album he's put out before or since. This was his most popular one on iTunes last I checked, and I can kinda see why. While there's nothing here sonically he hasn't done before, he seems to be more focused on refinement in the execution and making his usual style better than it was before. The beats and melodies and grooves may be extremely stripped back and minimalistic, but they're just addicting enough to keep me invested the whole time. The whole thing has a similar appeal to that Panthadu Prince thing I covered semi-recently. And he managed to get pacing down a lot better, too. Many tracks feel like they have a lot more of a sense of progression. Not to say it's perfect, uh, the track Paper Jet is a little bit of a clunker, but for the most part, this is probably the best and most well-realized iteration of his style up to this point. This one might be his most minimalistic techno project yet, and uh, it's a big mixed bag. <laughs> About half this project lands on the uninteresting filler E side. There's a track called Torque, which is not as good as the track called Torque on his debut. <laughs> Why does he have two tracks called Torque? But there were still highlights. Uh, Turning Point was by far the biggest standout in its more heartfelt melodic touches. Uh, there's a few fun cuts that have a bit more off kelter melodic texture near the end like Pivot, When, and La Mer. And it was good to hear Nicolette show up on the track Desire. I know her best for being on Plaid's best track, X Torque. And she does pretty well here too. But yeah, album's fine. Just, I don't know if I would really consider it one of his better ones though. And here's his first album for Compact, a lot more focused on the more melodic down-tempo side of his sound. It does admittedly run together a little bit, and I wouldn't be able to easily tell most of these tracks apart from each other, but it doesn't drag or feel inconsistent either. It's a solid bounce back from his last album. Very nice, very warm and inviting tech house material. Okay, this was the first one where I was starting to hear the Orbital comparisons. Still exploring the same mix of melodic synth tones and tech house beats as always, but getting more creative with them and presenting them in lots of different contexts and stranger ideas. 
It's much more attention grabbing and engaging than pretty much anything he'd put out prior. The last three cuts do admittedly almost border on straight ripping off Orbital from a sound design perspective, especially the track Glaringly Happy, which sounds somewhere in between their tracks Straight Sun, Never, and Copenhagen. But I guess I can't complain too much about more stuff that sounds like my favorite band. I, I can obviously give this my thumbs up. While this one's not as texturally interesting as the previous one, I do think it is yet another step up and more the kind of thing Tejada can call his own. Melodies are just as consistently solid as the last one, the minimalistic moody atmosphere is really well done, and this one goes the extra mile by being one of his best flowing projects in a while. I think the hype for this one is pretty well deserved. Alright, this one's kind of weird. Uh, it's better textured and varied than the last album, the grooves and melodies are about equally as good, and for whatever reason I didn't enjoy it as much. I'm, I could not tell you what was missing from this one. I guess this one ended up too much in B12 time tourist territory or something, I don't know. It's still a really solid album, I just was oddly left wishing I enjoyed it more than I did. It might grow on me later. Meanwhile, this one did absolutely nothing new for him and stuck firmly to his old minimal tech house formulas, and I enjoyed this pretty immediately. Very clean, very stripped back, very simplistic, but very satisfying. It's actually turned out to be one of my favorites. And finally, I suppose this one stands out for being his most ambient-centric in a while. Still got the usual tech house beats going over everything, but they're even more toned down than usual and it all seems to be focused on creating more of a subtle sense of atmosphere. I wouldn't call it a huge standout in his catalog, but uh, the tracks Echoes of Life and Spectral Progressions are gorgeous. Which brings us to here! So, I think I both understand why this guy has accrued a decent sized fanbase and also why he isn't talked about too frequently. Guy is absolutely not among the most innovative of artists, he sticks to a lot of tried and true genre formulas and doesn't do that much that plenty of other artists don't also do. He doesn't have the most distinct of a sound that I'd be able to easily recognize from a distance. But at the same time, he has no bad albums either. My least favorites were probably, I don't know, The Toiling of Idle Hands and Where? Even though those still have a few great individual moments. All his albums range from the very top of the 6 range to the very top of the 7 range. His worst albums are pretty good if a little inconsistent, and his best albums are really good if just shy of greatness. He's very consistent and has a lot of quality work to his name. He's gotten by on sheer craftsmanship for all these years, and you can always count on him for that. And even if his sound isn't especially distinct, he does absolutely have a signature sound. And he's made sure to change up his formula just enough to prevent that sound from growing stale. All these albums have their own feel to them, even if the differences can sometimes be pretty subtle. He has a bunch of projects I can see myself keeping around. Cleaning Sounds is a Filthy Business and Signs Under Tests are probably the, the best starting points. I also really like the Predicting Machine live rhythm tracks. Can maybe keep uh, Logic Memory Center in his debut, which surprisingly ended up as one of the better ones. Uh, maybe I'll give more time to Daydreams in Cold Weather or Dead Start Program. I'm glad I sat down with all this stuff, even if none of it was anything life-changing. I suspect any future albums are going to be relegated to some stuff I miss segments, but he does have my attention going forward. Anyway, that takes us to his latest album here, Sleepwalker. If not for the In Brief segment, I wouldn't have enough to say about this to highlight in its own video, but uh, it definitely fulfills every expectations you would have for a new John Tejada album. Lots of subtle and toned down techno grooves, very m minimalistic sound design as always. It's slightly more energetic than his last album, Year of the Living Dead, but like that album, it leans more on the quieter side of his sound, I guess. It's also one of his same year projects. I won't have all that much to say from like an individual track basis, but as usual, I thought it was all quite good for what it was. The album does start with its best foot forward in the first two tracks. Uh, Shattered is probably the most well-detailed cut in the bunch, with its mix of banging techno beats and wavering blocky pads being filled out with breathing sounds and some other clattering noises. The track has a mildly spooky flavor to it, I suppose, and it definitely pulls me in from the jump. And Excursion is probably my favorite out of all these cuts, definitely has the most propulsive groove and momentum out of all these tracks, despite still focusing on the same blocky and subtle sound design as everything else on the album. The minor key chord progressions do oddly make this track feel more exciting than it might initially appear on the surface. These two cuts do have a particularly neat cinematic feel to them that I think works really well. Now those are probably the best two cuts, and they're followed by the weakest two cuts, Over the Wires and When We Dead Awaken. They, they kind of blend into the background more than any of these other tracks. They sound like the average of everything else on the album, the closest this project has to filler. Though they still carry the same chill atmosphere and don't drop the album's momentum either. They may not be standouts, but they're not skips. 
Whip Hand is a bit of a bounce back. Not as silently dramatic as the first two cuts, but it does have one of the better grooves here. It has a nice, more uplifting feel to it. I like those little metallic clanking noises and that little, that tiny little bass guitar lick that happens right before the beats start to kick in more into gear. And the last three tracks seem for an even lighter and more chill sound than the stuff that came before. Unafraid surrounds itself with these airy whistling pads that give it a chilling but comforting feel and a slightly more skittering and off-kilter IDM-ish beat. Skull music just straight up goes into halftime and immerses itself in all these really warm and watery pad progressions that occasionally give me like Metamatics or Ski Mask vibes. Probably the most relaxing cut in the bunch. And then the closer Isolate, I think, might ever so slightly take the tempo down even further. It's a much jerkier and more off-kilter cut than many of the cuts that came before, but still manages to feel surprisingly refreshing in spite of all that. It's a serviceable enough finish to this thing. And that's everything on the album. <laughs> this project is really short, too. It's only about 38 minutes over 8 tracks. Pretty easily digestible for what it is. I mean, I don't know if I found this material to be uh, memorable or striking enough to want to keep around longer term. I wouldn't call Sleepwalker one of John Tejada's strongest albums. If I were to rank all of them, this would probably sit somewhere around the lower middle, I guess. There's absolutely nothing essential to be found here, but as per usual, this does definitively fall within good territory. I still liked all of it for what it was. There were no tracks that left me completely checked out, and there were a handful of standouts that did pull me in even more, like Shattered Excursion or Skull Music. All of it is good. I don't think it'd make for the most effective of starting points if you've never heard anything else from John Tejada. I would not blink if you told me you found this boring and forgettable. And I think he's got several other projects that I think are markedly stronger and even more striking than this one. But if this is your first exposure to him and it turns out this really resonates with you, then you will definitely be able to get into any and all of his other stuff. If you're, if you're like a fan of Ski Mask or Mono Lake or Richie Houghton or any minimal techno outfits, John Tejada is probably at least worth looking into to some degree. And uh, I can give this latest album of his a solid 7 out of 10. But of course, this is just my opinion. You can feel free to disagree with it, but I'd like to hear your thoughts, so leave the comments in the comment thing down there. Shout out to my Patreon supporters. They're awesome people. You want to add yourself that list, the link to my Patreon is in the description. But yeah, that's pretty much it. That's all for today. See you next time.